we're live with the Waffle Crew. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to Dice Camera Action, a D&D show where too much fun, they shed tears. <laughs> and hit oh, points. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And hit points, yes. <laughs> and feelings. Yes, they, oh. and feelings. Uh, I'm Chris Perkins, your DM, uh, but before we jump into today's game, I, have, I, I want Holly to talk a little bit about a super special thing happening right now. Yay, so uh, as you all know, well, maybe you don't know, now you're going to learn that Strix is going to be in the game Idle Champions of the Forgotten Realms. Ooh. Hooray! And it's super, super exciting because she has a bunch of super cool abilities, all like stuff from the game. And like, I, oh my God, I, I worked with them on getting her just like perfect and they did such a good job. I can't tell you how excited I am. Um, so I'm going to read all the little things I'm supposed to say. Strix will be a character in Idle Champions. Hooray. To unlock Strix, you'll need to play the game on PC. In a new event that starts next week, you can play Strix until then. Sign up for the official Idle Champions newsletter at idlechampions.com to stay updated. And I have to tell you, it's it's going to be great. It, she she cries. She throws things. She, <laughs> she eats snacks. It's, uh, she's going to be the most suboptimal champion that you can't live without. <laughs> Hooray. Excellent. Yay. Thank you, Holly. Yay. That's very exciting. <laughs> All right. Immortalized in yep. pixels. Yep. All right. Now let's time to cry. <laughs> yeah, before we cry and, and before we jump into things, I thought it would be actually a good occasion for us just to talk a little bit about things that our characters can do, things that our characters have on their person kind of as a reminder to you guys of all the cool things that your character might possess or can do, but also as a reminder to the fans of all the different things that your characters are capable of, because it's very easy as we play over the years, over the months and years, to forget about things that our characters have. And this would be a good <laughs> way to- You guys, we're getting so called out right now. <laughs> I know, he, he remind, he's reminding us that we have evil things he's given us. Just for, just for Not the just fans, evil you know, things. just for, is, just for I fans. feel like this is a setup but for something and I'm already upset. As well. yeah. I didn't study, I didn't do my homework. <laughs> <laughs> well, in the case of Paulton, we know uh, he doesn't have his hand anymore, he doesn't have the chalice anymore, but he has his mandolin. Mm. And you know all the fun things that the Kenneth mandolin can do, Nate? Yes, Why don't I do. you remind the fans? I, Why? <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, um, I definitely have it memorized, and I'm not going through my uh, email because that's Great. where. It's, uh, but you uh, can ah, you can use okay. it to cast the fly spell, the invisibility mm -hmm. spell, levitate, and protection from evil and good. On top of that, you can also cure wounds with mm -hmm. the mandolin. You can dispel magic, and you can cast protection from energy against lightning. Everyone knows that. Very useful. <laughs> Good, they'll remind us. Yep. Any other cool stuff that Paul has? Did I give him the sun sword back? Yes, you did. Yes. He has the, I sun, have the sword. sun sword. Super yeah. magical light blade. And uh, he doesn't have the ring of winter. Um, that was recently oh. lost. Uh, that made yes. me sad. Yeah. I also have bagpipes. Mm -hmm. Flavor. Yep, total they flavor. I haven't played those in a long time. I have, uh, there's, he's, he's been uh, Dealing doing a stuff. lot of stuff that he doesn't do in a long time. Yeah. It's, been, it's been a complicated few weeks. What are, what, are some oh, of yeah. the, what are some of the things that some of the other characters have? Doesn't Paulton have Eyes of Charming too? Yeah, he does. Oh yeah, I used that once yes. and it worked. And I'm like, all right, just <laughs> end it on a high note. Yeah, he's also got a disguise kit and two costumes that we don't know what those costumes are of. Oh my oh, god. I do. Oh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> For the fan. Costumes. <laughs> <laughs> One could be, I don't know, a gorilla costume, and the other could be a, a party clown, for all I know. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. Uh, if, if, if and when it becomes necessary, you can decide what those are. You don't have to settle on them now. You can, oh, just, cool. you can just suddenly say, hey, Chris, I have a pterodactyl costume. Oh, I'd, like to, I'd like to put it on now. <laughs> Hold on. Pterodactyl I want you to have, can the other one be a Chris Perkins costume? <laughs> There's no such person in this campaign. Oh, hey. oh hey, bummer. But there is. There is. It's in the same cinematic universe as Acquisitions, Inc., and I saw Chris Perkins in that game. It's true. <laughs> Did you really, though? Oh, man. Oh. <laughs> yeah, stop oh, metagaming. All right. Um, Anna, tell us a yeah. little about Evelyn and her cool things. Well, she has a broken axe called Lightfall in shards. Actually, no, she doesn't Dieth have that. Technically, Dieth has, Dieth has it, yeah. 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 Um, 
She has a magical axe called Tree Bane. And she also has a flaming sword that she has dubbed the Heart of Spinelli, which actually has another name, but she doesn't remember it. Um, she has the holy symbol of Ravenkind, which does some stuff to vampires. Oh, yes. Uh, which I have written down, but it's like it can hold them. Um, and it can also something do something to a vampire spawn. I don't know. Make it can hold, hold vampires, basically, is the main thing. Yep. Um, she's also a construct, so she's immune to disease and elemental things like cold mm -hmm. or poison. Um, she has, she received like a boon from Lathander. And I, I have fluff interpreted that as there's like a, a holy oil that kind of runs through her construct veins that gives her extra constitution. And she has all sorts of auras because she's a paladin. And she has a little mouse pet that is basically just napping and being fat all the time. Right, which we assume is being fed regularly too, but we don't often talk about it. No, she's just she's she's nesting inside Evelyn's chest cavity somewhere. She probably just gets hungry and gets let into Strix's robes and finds something. <laughs> there's probably a little pet. There's probably a little petal in Evelyn's Evelyn's stomach, which you can just press, and a piece yeah. of cheese pops out. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Evelyn's just always like restocking. <laughs> like one of those bear cages on Lost. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> Why? Sick Lost reference, Chris Perkins. <laughs> it is. Yeah. All right, DF. Uh, yes. What's on you? The, well, uh, he has a. Short sword of backstabbing called Gutter, which she can also place mystical keys into to summon Shemeshka, the Arcanaloth, from the city of Sigil for terrible things. And it's a regret every time. Um, he also has uh, Caltrops, uh, a rope. <laughs> uh, what else does he have here? Um, no hit can, points. What can he do? Uh, uh, he does have thieves uh, gloves of thievery, which uh, assists in his picking of locks. Um, he also has the horn of blasting right now. Yep. And then as uh, very evident both... Horn of future exploding. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and uh, as evident by both uh, physically and metaphorically, uh, he will never fly. And I, I do also ha also did obtain a padlock way long ago in Barovia, which I never used out of pure fear. Speaking of never used, Evelyn, you've got a four leaf clover pressed between the pages I don't. of a book of manners and etiquette, don't you? I gave that to Strix, and okay. Strix chopped it up and oh, tried that's to right. drink it. Yes, <laughs> but you still have, you still have the book on etiquette, right? Uh, I would. Strix has it. Okay. Yeah. So I think it's never she, come up again, though. But. Yeah. No. Okay. I'm gonna, I also, I forgot that I have uh, flying boots and a magical steed. <laughs> I forgot uh, that I, I put my uh, other treasures under my second page. Uh, I also got the ring of protection plus one that's infused with the spirit of Evelyn Marthane. Right. Uh, Wait, what? Oh, the ring. Yes. Yeah. And a luck stone. Yes. The often forgot luck stone. Oh no! I, I mean, I've got it calculated in. Yeah. I haven't forgotten it, but just <laughs> no actual luck has uh, come from it. Yeah, I forgot. I also have uh, five candles. Okay. No. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I have all sorts of random stuff. I have I have manacles, by the way. Those candles will save your life one day. Oh, Jesus. oh yeah. Well, now, now I feel like they are. Sorry, Evelyn oh, I... has manacles. You said. Yeah. Huh. I guess it's also worth pointing out that I have a um, egg bomb nuke. Oh yeah, there's the key still yeah, stuck yeah. inside of it. The Hal Ruin force bomb with the key stuck in it. That's probably which I am currently now. down to, uh, including key in the bomb. Uh, not including key in the bomb. I have three keys left. Okay. Yeah, and Strix has one. Oh. Evelyn also has a a ton of weapons that she just carries around. By javelins the javelins and miscellaneous. She other has things. only two javelins left. She also has a short sword, a hand crossbow. Uh, and, oh no, the great sword is hard to finale. So yeah. that's it, I guess. Strix, you've got a very, you got too many things. We could spend the whole show naming all, that's the, all, true. all the crazy <laughs> crap that you have, but let's hit the highlights. Okay, so you want the magical stuff? Whatever. Okay, yeah, I got a lot of stuff. <laughs> uh, 
Empty the robes. Yeah. <laughs> first, uh, first and I, foremost, you got your staff. That can become a great many yes. things. The staff can become a bunch of different things. I can tell you guys what it can become really quick, just so you know. Also, I forgot to say, uh, Nate, you have Evelyn's signet ring still. Her family. Yes. Um, yes. Okay, so it can become a fishing pole, a lantern with green flame, a flying broom, a cauldron, a cuddly owl bear or doll, chalk with or a quill with green ink, and a pie pan, a metal pie pan. There you go. Um, and also she has a bunch of stuff from Barovia. A lot of it's mundane, but I'll just read it really quick. Uh, varnish, basilisk's eye, three desiccated goblin fingers, pouch of revenant dust, vial of ghostly ectoplasm, jar of pickled ghouls tongues, copper pentacle amulet, large iron scissors, spinning top carved with four faces, um, teacup from a child's tea set, tiny dip black pot with stinky ashes, nails from a vampire's coffin, a uh, book of Barovian nursery, and rhy nursery rhymes, bundle of clothes stone from a scarecrow, a mummified raving's claw, uh, black wooden pipe that creates skull-shaped puffs of smoke, which she took back from artists, I'm sure, because, like, he died and she gave it to him. <laughs> <Whoops. Sure. laughs> Tiny wind-up music box that plays a charming elven hymn and the ring of protection plus, plus one from Evelyn. And that's that's all the stuff that has a name, but she has, like, a bunch of garbage that she's collected from Chol. So. And she can also turn into snakes. She can turn into snakes or, I think, rats, too, or any, mm -hmm. like, swarm. She can polymorph into a swarm. spiders. Or spiders. Yeah, the, the rats one she's just saving for later to, you know. Yes. Might need it. And on top of all that, you have an owlbear and a little puppet man. Yeah, and uh, well, what happened to the Triceratops? He's with Dragon Bait. Oh, that's right. God, thank God. Yeah. He's with Dragon Bait, uh, and we've been in here for a month. Two. Right. Two. Dragon Bait's a good babysitter. It's fine. Yeah. He's fine. Mm -hmm. All right. Previously in Dice Camera Action, the adventurers, the Waffle Crew reunited when... The Ring of Winter disappeared, uh, restoring Paulton to his senses and um, bringing the family back together. The characters then boarded the Shatterkai's old wagon, which was pulled by an ogre zombie named Meathook, and proceeded to head overland to toward death. Strix was basically ushering the zombie toward a place where she thought there might be a shadow crossing back into the real world. These shadow crossings are known to crop up in battlefields and place where many, many people have died or are buried, as in graveyards. Meat Hook led the Waffle Crew over a cliff, um, uh, plummeting to its death and nearly taking Evelyn with it, but her fortitude... I'm all right. Yep. She, she had enough hit points to survive the 100-foot fall off the cliff. Everybody else was able to bail out of the coach before it went over. And uh, the Waffle Crew discovered that this beach that they're on, um, the edge of the sea, is littered with shipwrecks and the bones of thousands of dead. Uh, and the cliffs are sort of a bone white color. Uh, it was around that time when out of the air came the Raven Queen in her various manifestations, and she took back the skull chalice and the severed hand, AKA Handrew, uh, back with her, but in exchange for taking these things back and telling Paulton that uh, his fate had been stolen from him, she left the Waffle Crew with a parting gift. And as you all gazed and looked upon Simon, you see that he sort of had a Rankin and Bass style claymation stop motion mouth uh, where his old hinged mouth used to be. He's still a puppet, but now he's got an animated mouth. Makes me more upset. <laughs> there was some confusion online about whether he's actually a boy or he's still a puppet. He's actually still a puppet, but he's got a real life mouth. Evelyn more, has more a mouth less. too, guys, and she's not a real girl. Yeah. Just so you know. And uh, <laughs> everything is terrible. <laughs> and he says, "Oh, oh, I can talk. I have a voice." Oh, my stars! I can tell jokes! And he starts to dance and parade around on the edge of the cliff. Oh, my goodness! <laughs> I've got a voice! I Wait a minute! That big bird stole my darts! Oh, no. Well, that's okay. <laughs> Strix just starts, like, hyperventilating. Like, <laughs> we needed a portal! <laughs> It's okay, Auntie Strix. 
Everything will be fine. Uh, aunt, aunt, auntie? All right. That's right. Uh, uh, what's the name? What do you call everyone else? Simon? Uncle Diaz? No. Papa Paulton? Mama Evelyn? Waffles? <laughs> <laughs> that squeak. <laughs> hey, I got a good one. Why was Strix late for the Waffle Crew family reunion? Oh no. Oh, no. no. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Her broom overswept. <laughs> Evelyn thinks this is hilarious and doubles over laughing. I'm upset. Strix, Strix, Strix is just like. What does a clock do when it's hungry? He it goes back more. for seconds. Get it? Evelyn just goes Evelyn back just goes four seconds. I we should have killed him. <laughs> How do you make a clown cry? He doesn't stop. <laughs> <laughs> you kill his family. <laughs> so despite having the curse temporarily removed off of him, Dieth is just standing there going, this isn't real. What did the shoe say to the pants? <laughs> Sup, bridges? <laughs> I'm so mad. Evelyn's like, stop, stop, it's killing me! <laughs> They're killing me! <laughs> looks like, straight at Paulton and she goes, this is your problem, and walks away. <laughs> oh, no, where are you going, Auntie Strix? <laughs> How did, why did the scarecrow get what? a prize? Quickly, she's running away as he's following She's chasing her. after you. <laughs> no, really, why did the scarecrow get a prize? I don't want to hear it anymore. Because it was outstanding in its field. <laughs> <laughs> so they're chasing each other around now. Talton just sees this. He's like, all right, so what's next? I'm a puppet. I'll never get tired. <laughs> So that's that's good to keep in mind. Uh, Strix is crying. <laughs> so where to? Uh, be, yeah. Where be? But uh, uh, <laughs> uh, the, we, we, we still need to leave. Uh, Waffles starts Strix. chasing Simon, who's chasing after Strix. He oh. chases Waffles. <laughs> when he says Strix, she'll stop. Okay. Yes. So, uh, uh, did you sense anything about a portal or any way out of here? Isn't there supposed to be something nearby? Yes. Um, yeah, you sense something directly kind of sort of below you in the Oh, cliffs. yeah, there's like a cave or something. That's yeah. Right. Yeah, why don't we send Chuckles down there to go check it? Uh, who? Chuckles. <laughs> That's his new name to me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> got it. I have so much to ask him. Can't we just sit down and talk for a while? I want to know everything about how he feels and what he thinks. I, I'm going. It would be I'm great going to, to ask, tell you how I feel. I would love to hear it. I'm going to ask him, Simon. I'm going to ask you one question. What is it, Papa Paulton? Are you ready to go? Yes. All right. Cool. That's, Where are we going? that's all I needed to know. Where are we going, guys? <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, we should go towards wherever this sense thing is. Also, I want Strix to make sure that DF has the ring so he doesn't lose any more hit points. Oh, right. I think you mentioned that last week now that I yeah. think about it. Yeah. So DF yeah, coughs up a little bit of yeah. blood. Yeah. <laughs> Strix has, I think, like 24 or something. She yeah. has more. So you know, she'll give him a blanket and the ring and be like, we stopped dying. Oh, that's right. right. He's got the blanket around him. Yeah. That's right. Working. Yes. The damn he likes blanket. Blankies. Yeah. Yeah. She just like pats it occasionally. Like, please stop. Uh, hey. Yeah. So I guess we'll go. Hey, Mama Evelyn. Yeah. Yes. So yes, you can call me that. Do you know where Winter Paulton keeps his gold? Winter Paulton? I, I, I can't say I do. In snowbags. Oh, it was a Get joke. Get it? In snowbags? <laughs> In snow bags? You're such a funny little child. Thank you. I just he try, she tries to pinch his cheeks, but she has like metallic hands. And, yeah. yeah, it's like <laughs> Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> she just holds his hand, she's like, 
This is going to be so fun. Let's just chit chat the whole time we go. Where are we going? Let's go. I've got so many jokes to tell now. Good. You see Strix just like take, go into her robes and take like two like mothballs and just shove them in <laughs> Just like smash them in there. And she's just like, everything's better. Yeah. Now you just hear. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, as you make your way around the cliffs and you're flying to get a better view, it is very foggy here, but through gaps in the fog, you can see that from the rocky shore, the pebbled shore, there is a staircase that was, looks like it was carved long, long, long time ago. It's all eroded and worn that sort of goes up the cliff face to what appears to be a hole about 30 feet, 70 feet from the top of the cliff and about 30 feet from the, the shore. And it looks like a tunnel at first glance. Hmm. And uh, if you don't fly, you would have to scale the cliffs down 70 feet to reach this tunnel. That's pretty far down. Uh, how precarious are said cliffs? They are, they're sort of like, um, it's white limestone with lots of handholds, but sometimes the handholds are spaced oddly apart or far away. So it's still a sheer treacherous drop. You could do it without climbing gear. It would just require a strength athletics check. Um, Strix can polymorph Diaf again, too. And you talked about polymorphing him into yeah. some sort of eagle, I believe? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's right. Then the Raven Queen showed up. Right. Yeah. And then we all got too scared. Okay, so you're going to use another polymorph spell to turn him back into a bird so that Diaf can fly down to the tunnel with the rest of you. Or, how or, does it feel to fly? Oh, but how does that solve the Waffles Simon oh, thing? Oh, God. I would also like to request I not be the first person who goes into a spooky cave. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go first. Um, As he, he like th coughs up more blood. <laughs> would uh, would Simon not be able to ride with me on the mandolin? Yeah, uh, your mandolin, your fly spell only works on a single creature, so no, the two of you okay. would cause the mandolin just to sit there and go put 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 put. Can I carry him? Um, technically. Let me check the winged boots description. Could you use levitate to float him down? You could. I also we, should, have... we should levitate uh, waffles. We shouldn't levitate Simon. Yeah. If Simon. Two of us could probably carry Simon, but, but waffles we can't carry. Upon just... review of my character sheet and items, I also realize I have 50 feet of hemp and rope if we need to lower him down. You're strong enough. I can just dimension door him down. Oh. That's oh, possibility yeah. too, yes. All right, and, and actually you could, do, you could do both Waffles and Simon because two creatures can go through a dimension door, right? Or no, it's you plus one creature. Never mind. Mm. All right. I, do I also have dimension? I think I also have dimension. Oh, yeah, I have dimension door too, so I can take... So you're both going to use a dimension door to send your companions down. Got it. Yes. <laughs> all right. Uh, so you all are now standing in front of this tunnel, which is 30 feet above the water level, set carved into the white limestone rock. And you can see that the tunnel is vaguely hexagonal. If you took a, just a perfect hexagon and you sort of stretched it vertically, that's sort of the shape that the tunnel makes. It kind of bows mm. out in the walls. And it goes back, uh, Strix, with your dark vision, you see it goes into the rock about 60 feet and then hits an intersection. And this tunnel's about 10 feet wide. All right. You can also see that there are carvings in the rock, and they look quite old. In the, in, I, the, in the tunnel walls, I mean. I would like to religion check those. Okay, go ahead and make a check. Uh, 12. Okay. Um, I would like to religion check those. Look, I was trying to show you up, okay? <laughs> go ahead. 16. All right. Um... So, with your roll, Evelyn, and looking, peering in to the tunnel, you can see that the bottom parts of the walls, or the, sorry, the top angled parts of the walls seem to be like a procession uh, of robed figures making their way inward. And it looks like some sort of priestly procession. They're carrying candlesticks and other things in these images. And then you can see the lower half of the wall uh, which sort of has a more pebbled texture to it, 
has a similar procession, but they're all skeletons. And these two processions are making their way inward. And the religious significance you read by looking at the various other iconography and things is that this is or was the lair of some sort of death cult. Oh. Oh. Oh, it's no big deal. It's just people who wanted to die together. You know, hey. I really don't want to fight musties right now. Uh, I, I really don't. fight anything. Well, don't you think the portal's in here? Isn't that why we're going in here? Yes. Can you sense anything, Strix? Can I sense anything? <laughs> no. I think it's fine. We're all here together. Simon can talk. He can How keep us this? cheerful with lots of little jokes. Why don't we send Paulton in invisible first? Huh? You can become invisible. Go and, and check for us. How do I know something can't sense me? I'll go with you. Okay. <laughs> All I'm saying is that DF and I are not really in sh the shape to fight anything, is what Diet, I'm trying Diet, to say. That's fair. DF takes his blanket and just kind of... <laughs> Simon says, I don't know if we should go in there. It looks pretty dangerous. <laughs> what do you know? <laughs> that's real nice of you to be concerned about your family, Simon. I, I think just... we'll be okay. Simon's like a King's Quest NPC. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> Look out for those bees! <laughs> <laughs> Look at, Brad, watch out! Oh, it's a mistake! Um, so, um, a weird we sensation overcomes you, Paulton, as you gaze down the tunnel. There's no almost like sensations. There's almost, it almost seems to distort a little bit in front of you, and then uh, you hear, or not, you don't hear it, you just sort of sense the presence of the Ring of Winter. <gasps> like it's been brought here. Oh, fuck. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna... So as soon as he feels that, he's just like, Paulton gives like a, like a, like flashback face. He just kind of. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sounds good. And he just goes invisible and starts going in. Okay. Now, um, since you don't have a light source, what are you going to use to see once you get deeper in the tunnel? Evelyn's shining personality. <laughs> well, as discussed earlier, I do have five candles. You do, <laughs> yes. And if you hold an invisible candle while it's lit, no one can see the candle. All they see is the light emanating oh. off of it. Ooh, Spooky. that's kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So you're just like this moving uh, sphere of light making its way down the passageway. See, this was not all for naught. The candle gets yeah. play. It's true. That was, that was the whole point. Yes. I also have just discovered I have a lantern. <laughs> <laughs> or a sword that starts on fire. Yes, whatever. Or that. Oh, yeah, that too, yeah. <laughs> and now I have four candles. Yes. And so, a lit one. So the rest of you are standing back, uh, just watching as this light goes down the tunnel. And as it does, you can see it, it lights up more of the walls and everything is... Very, very old and dusty in here um, and damp. And, and you can see, Paulton, that there's like salt crunching under your feet where it's come off the, the sea and just sort of settled in here. Uh, make a perception check as you advance. Eighteen. Very good. Uh, Three. Cool. Uh, you can see that with an 18, two things. One, underneath the salt and dirt on the floor, it looks like the floor is covered with tiles. Uh, many of them are just slate gray, but there are actually what look like, what look like to be um, colored tiles that form paths down the corridor. And you haven't been following them so far. You've just started to notice them as the salt begins to peter out, that there are colored paths that wend across the floor almost like snakes. 
and they're made out of uh, gold-colored tiles. So there's like a golden snaky path. There's a red snaky path, and there is a purple snaky path. And they sort of overlap and crisscross their way down the tunnel. You also notice about 10 feet ahead now, there is a gash in the roof of the tunnel. It looks like some tremor or something must have caused the, the earth to separate, creating a fissure across the roof. Um, sort of a deeper, darker opening where the worked stone has split and created a gash, a deep gash in the roof ahead. The tunnel goes past that. Okay. Do these do these paths on the floor seem like like do they look like they're just aesthetic, like they're just design, or does it seem like there's they might be linked up to something? Um, it, if it's a design, it's an interesting one. Um, the the paths seem to sort of go their own way down the passageway. You would venture to guess that they do have a purpose. Um, maybe one or the other is meant to be followed, you're not sure. Huh. Did we hear Paulton go, huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Uh, like, guys, there's like snaky paths, and I don't know which one to do, and I'm scared. Snakes? What? Eight snakes. You how heard far, me. How far ahead did Paulton and Evelyn oh, go? Um, uh, how close to Paulton did you expect to be, Evelyn? How, me? Yeah, are you staying back with the others or are you following him? No, I was with him. Okay. With Evelyn. Um, with so as, as you look around and Paulton notes the paths on the floor, the gold snaky path, the red snaky path, and the purple snaky path, um, you can make a religion check to see if there's a religious significance. I guess all And, there, and the, the rest of you were about like 20 feet behind them waiting at the entrance. Oh, wow. So he barely went in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. If, if I hear him go, huh, like I can, and there's no monsters, like I'll shuffle in and just like <laughs> usher <laughs> Dieth in his blanket, just like <laughs> bring him behind me. A religion check. My, right. uh, 12. Okay, you're not sure if they have any religious significance at all. Um, and you can hear your friends shuffling in behind you. <laughs> I can do a religion check too. Let's see if I can. Nope, nope. I don't know. I know nothing. <laughs> hey, Uncle Diaz. Why, why was the zombie fired from its job? Why? <laughs> He's upset right now. <laughs> I'm trying to take his mind off this. I don't know if that's going to work. <laughs> Why? He wanted a raise. Get it? Uh, a raise? Strix will be like, that, that Mayhap if happen. magic or religion need not know what these, pile, these tiles are made of, perhaps someone who is a dungeon delver could figure oh. it out. <laughs> so DF will shoulder himself to the front of the line. I just, and like in the I brilliant just, light of Paulton's candle... Gaze down it's like upon Simon the floor. is ta telling his joke. Dieth just declares this to like shut him <laughs> yeah, up, yeah. to drown him out, and then goes forward. Yep. Strix will give him some snacks too. Like, good job, little guy. Uh -huh. um, Very good. So I guess within the tiles itself, I'm looking for um, anything that seems to show if perhaps one of these was used more often than others, or if anything could potentially be dangerous or lead to traps or whatever. Okay. So I guess just, I'm just investigating it, percepting it. Yep. Uh, which one would you say? Uh, let's make it a perception. Perception? Great. Uh, 16. Okay. Um, you believe, studying these, that the golden trail is, has been used over time more than the red or the purple trail. Uh, it, it definitely shows signs of more scuffing, more of the little tiles that make it up, having chipped away from having been stepped on and crunched underfoot more often than the others. Mm -hmm. uh, the red trail is almost, with the exception of the elements that have taken hold, uh, probably the least traveled of the three. 
if traveled at all. Huh. Uh, it's, tiles are, it's tiles are fairly intact, if not okay. completely so. <clears throat> I, I relay this information to everybody. Hmm. So well, I like golden trails. trails. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Evelyn, you like that. If I like is, gold. If this has been a way in and out of whatever this cursed realm, if people are going in and out frequently, perhaps the gold trail might lead us to wherever, well, however we just need to get out of here. Now, before it. we do that, maybe let's consider that that one is the most traveled because that was the most common guess. I Fair. Ah! <laughs> just, just to throw a wrench in our logic really quick. Can I use divine sense to see if any of the paths seems evil to me or if any like end place feels evil certainly let me just check something can i lick them all and see if one of them tastes different mm. Mm. so until the end of your next turn evelyn you know the location of any celestial fiend or undead within 60 feet of you uh you know the type blah 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 uh, you're not picking up anything evelyn uh, Strix, you start licking the tiles. <laughs> Do they taste different? They taste, you know, they taste salty. Any path we take together will be the right one. All right, let's... Definitely not the case. I agree. <laughs> we should all stick together. What a good boy. Thank you, Simon. Let us never be separated again. Oh, that's, that's... Uh, that's foreboding. <laughs> mm. So do we still want to go gold, or...? We don't really have a choice, so shuffle away. Evelyn, you walk first, because you're less... You're not a mess. Okay. Um, Watch out, anyone who's evil! No! We'll take you down! We're coming on the gold path right now! All right. Unless <laughs> that's wrong. So, uh, Evelyn, uh, you don't have dark vision, so um, you can't get too far ahead of your sputtering candle flame. Oh, um, I'll make my staff the lantern behind I'll her. Okay. Out, I'll pull out the heart of Spinelli. All right. So you've got a flaming sword. Now we've got the green light of Strix's lantern, and we've got yeah. Paulton's little candle uh, <laughs> burning in this passageway. All right, yeah. uh, Evelyn, and you start to head forward with your burning sword, using it to sort of light the, the golden path. Is that what you're trying to do, follow that path? Yeah, it looks super cool, like a like cool warrior torch. All right. If Evelyn is leading, DF is literally like one step behind her, just on high alert, doing, okay. doing his treasure hunter thing. You come to the you point. You stay Even behind me if anything comes. Yeah. Oh, I am. You come to the point <laughs> in this ten foot wide hallway, Evelyn, that the gash in the ceiling is almost above you, um, mm -hmm. and uh, you can see little bits of earth have fallen from it on, and sort of piled up onto the floor to the point where you can't see any of the paths anymore. They're all covered with the debris. It's a mess in here. This is just unacceptable. Uh, how much dirt is it? Like, could I sweep it away at all? It would take a it would take a few minutes, but you can basically brush or push it aside if you want to. I can also use my uh, prestidigitation to. Poof. It would take oh, yeah, you. It would take you that. probably a few whiffs of like quite a bit of prestidigitation to get it all out of the way. But you could essentially. The the thing is, is you can kind of push it here and push it there. Um, to clear the path, there's if you just push it further down the tunnel, that's not going to help because it's just going to bury oh. more of the. Oh, I have a better. I have a better idea. I have a broom. Oh yes, you do. <laughs> I can just sweep it with my broom. Yes, you can. All um, right. So do you want to? You want to go up there and start sweeping? Yeah, just like. All right, everybody, make perception checks. I knew it. I'm having a Eight. good time sweeping. Four. 26. Seven. <laughs> okay. DF, you are the only one who is... Oh, I forgot to roll for Simon. <clears throat> Simon's like, watch out! <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, DF, you are not surprised when tentacles descend from the gash in the ceiling and attempt to wrap around Strix and her broom. Uh, everybody, could, everybody can roll initiative. DF, you're going to get to go in the initial round. Okay. <clears throat> Oh, nice. I got a dirty 20. 
I got six. Oh, wait, this what? die sucks. It's going back in the bag. All right, so dirty 20 for Strix, six for Evelyn. DF? Uh, my initiative is 10. 10, and Paulton? Uh, that, that, that's a nat one. Oh, dear God. <laughs> okay. Uh, He's like, so don't blow out the candle. The first thing to act <laughs> is the creature. Uh, and it will make... Do I, do I get an act before? No, it's not surprised or you're, no? Okay. neither you nor it are surprised, so you too okay. are acting, and it, it gets higher than you. Cool. Um, so Great. it attempts to wrap a tentacle, a barbed tentacle around Strix, and rolls a 20 total on the attack roll. Would that count as an attack where I could use a hellish rebuke? <laughs> you could, but you are surprised, so you oh. can't Ooh. use reactions. Then I piddle myself. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, so as this tentacle, this barbed tentacle wraps around you, it pulls you off your feet and up into the gash. Uh, you take eight points of bludgeoning damage as it tightens around you and constricts you, and you are currently grappled by it. And as you are pulled up inside this gash, you can see that it looks like just this brown, milky mass stuck to the roof of this gash with all these tentacles coming out of its body. And at the front of its brown mass, you see a almost like a spider's mouth. <laughs> Looking you back at you. Help! <laughs> and it's, it's big. It's about the size of a, like a lion or a tiger or something, plus tentacles. Um, but clearly a, a total aberration. It doesn't belong in this world or any other. Uh, and then it will use another tentacle to try to snatch up Evelyn and rolls a, not, uh, not a natural 20, but a dirty 20 on its it roll. It hits. Okay. Uh, you too are wrapped up in a tentacle, and you take 14 bludgeoning damage as you oh. are pulled up into the hole. So Paulton and Dieth, you see Dieth is... Uh, Sorry, Strix and Evelyn just off their feet and pulled up in the hole and in a flurry of tentacles. And then, finally, the creature is going to make a bite attack against uh, Strix. Strix. Am I now within five feet of Strix in this tentacle? You are. So oh, she gets ahead. its disadvantage okay. to the creature. Okay. Uh, in that case, um, since I forgot about that, it's actually going to attack you instead, Evelyn. Oh, great. It's... <laughs> It'll, it'll go for the most tantalizing target, and you're putting out the aura, so there you go. Uh, How does it know I'm putting out the aura? You said you glow. You can I? sense Lathander. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I can sense the tasty, tasty Lathander goodness. Um, uh, so because, oh, you, because you are grappled, it has advantage on its bite, um, and it's going to roll a 17 on the bite. My armor class is 17. Then that is a hit. Great. Oh, that was not a lot of dice. I uh, just emptying my dice. <laughs> <laughs> just emptying the dice bag. <laughs> Look, I have a lot of hit points, but they're not infinite. Okay. You take twenty nine points of damage from the bite. No. Okay, I'm actually getting oh. to the point where I have to add these up. I am going to die. I'm going to die. All right. Um, so you hear the crunching of teeth against metal up in oh. that dark hole. I told you this was a bad idea. Paulton, or, Salmon, we have no time for I told you so's. I'm sorry. And uh, next up is Dieth. How high up is Strix? Uh, she is right now about 10 feet off the floor, oh. up in the hole. Okay. I would like to use my movement action to basically, like, as soon as she's like, like grabbed and thrown up, like. Yep. Dieth tosses up the blanket, runs to one of the cavern walls, yep. uh, runs up it and like springs off of it towards Strix. And as he's like leaping off, it's like uh, attack from the sheath of gutter at the tentacle that's currently grabbed her. Great, yeah. Since this, since the hulls are sort of bowed the way they are, you have no trouble using the wall as a launching pad for your attack. Okay. Go ahead oh. and remember, um, because Strix is an ally, you have advantage on your attack roll. Great, because I would also like to use my feat of human determination to give myself advantage on this attack roll. Okay. Alton hey. sees all this like, oh, Naruto. <laughs> 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 That's 
a natural 20. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, it's That's like the, the, the frog hemoth. Yeah. All right, uh, mini dice. Okay, so. Kill it, kill it, kill it. One, two, three, five. All right, one more. I don't think he's going to kill it, but you know. <laughs> All right, this will take a lot of math, so give me one second. Because it's double on the sneak attack damage, isn't it? Is that correct? Yes. <laughs> that is Good. correct. <laughs> Chris Perkins says, disappointed. Don't sound so excited. <laughs> I like to imagine the moment where he throws off the blanket just being super dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh my God, that's the highest I've ever rolled. <laughs> okay. Turns out he is Naruto enough. 58. Holy, Holy shit. Holy shit. <laughs> Calm yeah, down. You, you dash this thing. Um, and as a, after taking such a monumental amount of damage as a reflex, its tentacle just sort of flings Strix out, and Strix, uh, you sort of land on the floor. She's just like, she's just staring like, did that just happen? <laughs> <laughs> and then Deeth, like, three point superhero lands right next to Strix. All right. Evelyn's like. <laughs> Hero landing. <laughs> as a legendary action Aww. at the end of Deeth's turn, the creature and Evelyn teleport away. <gasps> oh, what's a legendary action? I didn't even heard of it's that. It's something we should not be dealing with right now. <laughs> I didn't even know about It's basically a single action they can use generally once per combat. Klaus has them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, Evelyn, uh, you find yourself transported into a sort of rough hewn, rocky chimney. Um, with the creature still coiled around you, uh, but your friends sound much farther away. The rest of you see the creature and Evelyn disappear, and then from somewhere even higher up than they were before, you can hear Evelyn's gasps of surprise and the creature's gnashing teeth. You hear her say, you let go of me! <laughs> so it just went straight up, it, like, looked, it, it sounds, sounds like, like it just disappeared this... and is now much higher than it used to be. That gash must go up quite far. Oh, okay. So it's still like within the same hallway, more or less. It's, it's not in, in the, the hallway. Chimney. It is now in the chimney oh. that it was hiding in. Great. All right. All right. Uh, in. <laughs> and that was at the end of DF's action. So now we're back at regular initiative. And Strix, you're the first one to go. All right, well, I already have my broom ready. Yes. Um, but is it far? Ooh, uh, fireball probably will reach it, honestly. Uh, True, but you, yeah, can't, you can't see Evelyn to shape it around her. Damn it. Oh, that's the worst. All right, then I will. Um, so Misty Step is a bonus action. Correct. So I'm going <laughs> to. Ugh. I don't have that many hit points. <laughs> <laughs> don't laugh like that! <laughs> I'm so scared. Okay. <laughs> no, <I'm just> <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, she'll just like look at Dia and be like, "Thanks for saving me, but I'm gonna go save Evelyn now." <laughs> just get on her broom okay. and just misty step to where she thinks that the, just enough to where like like she can see Evelyn, like to where the creature used to be. I have my flaming sword, so it's a good beacon. Yeah, when you go up 30 feet into the chimney, uh, just make a dexterity saving throw for me. Okay. That's an eight. You scrabble to find purchase. I'm on my broom! Oh, that's right. You actually <laughs> sat on your broom. Uh, but you had to actually use an action to activate the broom, right? No, I had it because I was sweeping. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, so yes, you're up on your broom in the <laughs> chimney, <laughs> Chris Perkins. <laughs> and and thirty feet above you, you see the flickering orange light of what must be the sword of Spinelli. Okay, perfect. And then I will cast a. Um, I like to cast fireball. Okay. At fifth level. <laughs> okay. And uh, wrap it around Evelyn so that she doesn't get hurt. All right. Thank you. Why was he giggling? I don't know. <laughs> oh, no. uh, uh, but we'll find out. Yep. 
So <laughs> Evelyn, a fireball on. detonates all around you and fills this chimney with flame, and you hear the creature scream. <laughs> Monstrix. And he's going to make a saving throw. I'm actually going to give him a penalty on his save because he's in a tight, confined space. 52. Yes! Dang, you two. All right. Uh, yeah, so the creature is badly, badly scorched, Evelyn. You see all of its uh, flesh start to burn away. Many of its tentacles become sort of blackened, uh, shriveled husks as it screams. It still seems to be thrashing and alive. Uh, Strix, there is a whooshing sound, and then this green fire comes pouring down the chimney. Over you, make uh, a dexterity saving throw with disadvantage, since you didn't omit yourself from the blast. That's a six. Okay, so you take half damage of that. Oh, it doesn't matter. I'm, all, I'm, I'm done. I just fall out of okay. the chimney. And the blast continues down spills this out to the ground happening. and fills the tunnel below. Oh my god. Diath, Halton, oh. and Simon also have to make dexterity saving throws. I just killed us all. Where is Waffles? Killed us all. Too far away. Waffles is right at the end of the blast. Uh, dirty 20. Okay, so you're gonna take half damage. 22. So, and you're gonna take, you have evasion. I have yeah. evasion, so I'm going to take none. zero. Uh, and uh, Paulton, you take 26 points of fire damage. Sick. With uh, with my evasion, can I use my reaction to catch Strix's falling body? <laughs> this is the saddest thing that's ever. Happened. Yeah, you see this black sort of tumbling mass come down the chimney, clattering with the the broom, and. Uh, uh, just make a uh, dexterity acrobatics check. Okay. I'm, I'm more okay actually, no, this should actually be a strength check because you are. this is just dead weight falling on top of you. Okay. Oh, God. Mm. Flat 16. Okay, you're good. Okay. You do manage to catch her after taking no damage from her blast. Oh, I forgot to make a saving throw for Simon. Don't toast my boy. Does he have any jokes about dying? <laughs> Guess is hey, Strix, what kind of fire would make... <laughs> <laughs> Actually, we broke it. Yes. He's broken. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, dear God. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, uh, uh, yeah, Simon's like, hey, Paulson, what did the... And then the blast comes <laughs> down. Uh, engulfing you, engulfing him. Uh, and as you turn and look at Simon, uh, he's just like this blackened, charred uh, wooden figure that just uh, ignites with fl flame and falls down. Burning. No. <coughs> You're laughing, Holly? That's a sun! <laughs> that's, that's a panic laugh. Um, oh, that was, oh, yeah, no, I, I that was Strix's turn. Uh, at the end of Strix's turn, the Bahanath is going to use another legendary action uh, to make a bite attack on Evelyn. Y'all told me it was only one per battle! Uh, it's going to hit you. They get, they get like three points, and like it has like a regeneration uh, system. Uh, You'll learn about it as you DM, don't worry about it. I love learning about D&D. &D. Diath, you, or sorry, uh, Evelyn, you take another 28 points of piercing damage. I need to check. How many? 28? 28. Oh, no. There's always the runaway option. I'm unconscious. Oh, okay. Uh, so you too will fall. No, you're in the grip of the creature. Never mind. Uh, so it's still got you. I don't think you guys have ever seen... Construct Evelyn unconscious before. No. So she just is like a limp robot ragdoll. Well, not ragdoll. All right. Robot doll. <clears throat> Tanks down. Not good. Uh, yeah. So uh, what? You, I did what the fall rest of you? So last episode. Diath, just pointing out. Diath, what? I would you like you <laughs> to make a dexterity saving throw. Why so many saving throws? Okay. Just, it's been fun, guys. You got it, buddy. 
16. Okay, you hear ting, tang, ting, tang, ting, tang, ting, tang, tung, and then you see the sort of Spinelli come tumbling oh, down the chimney and almost slash you in half, but you get out of the way. And it just lands on the ground with a clatter, 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 and it's just smoldering. The light I'm, I'm moving like Strix. The like light has head. gone out. Chris Perkins. Yeah, that was a good metaphor. Is Paulton still conscious? Are you okay, buddy? Hanging in there. Yeah, I, okay. believe, I, I believe Paulton's down to single digit hit points. <laughs> has Paulton, did Paulton see the sword? Uh, yeah, you saw the sword of Spinelli and heard it clatter down into the tunnel. So between the, the sword and the, the, the unconscious son, he's kind of doing the Jim Carrey like, ah! <laughs> ah! Ah! <laughs> Simon's just lying there on his back on fire. Uh, just like, just stopping. <laughs> Hang on. Uh, next, uh, uh, next action I'll belongs Simon. to... You get to Evelyn. Uh, so next action belongs to the creature. The creature is going to bite Evelyn. It has advantage as it gnaws on her. Oh, is it because she's going to... limp? Yeah. <laughs> clunk, clunk, clunk. Um, Evelyn, uh, you take, you suffer two failed death saves. Um, and I, I, don't, I can't emotionally deal with this. Uh, next up, yeah, this is, this is very strange. Me oh, preparing this for this game. Oh, I can think of all these fun conversations I'm going to have with all the characters. Me in this game. <laughs> Dead. You guys remember uh, when the session started with jokes? All right. Uh, and then the rest of you hear this rending noise. And you hear clink, 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 oh, clink, clink, clink. And piece, all kinds of pieces of Evelyn begin to rain down the chimney and spill around Diath and Strix. Ow. Um, when you say pieces, are we talking limbs or just like little metal chunks? Uh, it, it sort of starts with uh, just nuts and bolts and torn off pieces of armor and then an arm and then a leg with oh, no. a, a boot and then her torso and then her head comes clattering oh. down and just rolls over to Paulton's feet. Oh no. It's, it's, it's okay. She probably used it as an improvised weapon. No. It slipped. No, no. This is, fi this is fine if I ever feel the need to do something, then I'll do it. Simon's turn. Uh, he gets to make a death save. Okay. Uh, he's just sort of stops twitching. And it's just on fire. Uh, DF, what do you do? Um, uh, did Paul not get a turn? Did he I get hasn't turn? gone yet. He rolled a one on his initiative. We got past the, we just got past the um, surprise oh. round and now we're into the regular round where the okay. order of initiative was Strix, then the creature, then Simon, then Diath, then Evelyn, then Paul. Okay, I follow, I follow. Yeah. Um, is Simon still actually on fire? He is on fire. Okay. Well, he's more I'm like just kind of smoldering at this point. Okay. Oh no. Um, going to take the blanket that I was wearing and use it to run over to Simon and use that to put out okay. whatever flame is Since, on him. Yeah, it's so damp that you pretty much just smother him right away. Yeah, and just use that to put, put out the fire. Yeah. Uh, and... Probably uh, use Strix to put out a fire. Uh, and after that, then I'm going to uh, actually... So I'll, I'll use my, it was sort of like the blanket on them. Is that considered like a, a use an object? Yeah. Okay. So using like rogue fast hands, like I just toss that on there. <laughs> a cutting action dash to return back to Strix. Okay. Uh, immediately try to see if she needs to be uh, stabilized or whatever, or yeah. anything I can do to, to help her. Okay. Um, you can make a medicine check to stabilize her. Okay. Do I have that? It's not great. No, it's just, uh, if you don't have it, it's wisdom. 
Yeah. Yeah, it's not great. Great. Uh, I rolled a one. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you chop off her head now. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so that does not stabilize her. So she's continuing to, no. uh, to die. Um, and that's your action. Evil. Oh. As the creature sort of rips your party apart, and you don't even feel that really, it's just, you know, damage as far as you're concerned. But then you feel the sudden separation of your soul from your body. And the soul is sort of drawn through darkness uh, into what looks like the yawning mouth of a giant devil face. And as it descends down into that mouth and sort of uh, uh, sinks into that abyss, suddenly you rise up, or rather materialize on what appears to be a stone rooftop in a place you've never seen before. So let me paint you a picture. As you look around, it appears that there are many of these rooftops, a series of towers spread out in a kind of grayish abyss with large space between the towers. And as you sort of look out over the battlements of this tower roof that you're standing on, toward those other towers, you can see there are lower down on the towers struts or um, arches that connect all these towers to each other. But they are so tall and so slender, and they seem to go down farther than you can possibly see, that there's just something very alien about uh, this place and the towers. There is a wind that seems to blow grit through the air, which also sort of obscures your view of some of the farther away towers. And when you kind of look down, there is a reddish glow from below, deep, deep below, um, possibly where these towers meet Earth somewhere far below. The next thing you notice is over your head is a gigantic swirling black vortex, a huge maelstrom uh, uh, with black stormy clouds all around it. And that vortex seems to funnel upward almost like a black twister, like you see in those videos of twisters going through Kansas or Oklahoma. And that twister becomes almost like this umbilical-like shape that goes off and attaches to some sort of big black amorphous moon in the sky. And you look at that moon very closely, and it has limbs or something attached to it. But it's impossibly huge. So the towers, the vortex swirling in the sky overhead, it is then that you notice that you are not alone, that there are other beings on this rooftop. And like you, they are spectral. You appear to be a ghost of yourself hovering on this rooftop. And you are looking at the spectral bodies and visages of others on this rooftop with you. Does Evelyn know enough about the soulmonger to assume that that might be the god baby? You would safely say yes. Does she recognize anyone else on this roof? Make a perception check. Oh, please, Lathander. 14. So you notice that a few of the three of the figures look familiar to them. Um, you don't think you've seen them up close, but you saw them from a distance. One is a sort of scrawny, scrappy-looking tiefling man. Uh, and the other is a gnome in a vest. And the third is an, is an elven woman. Uh, oh, oh, no. Uh, they appear to be the ghosts of the Acquisitions, Inc. battle balloon crew 
who perished uh, during that uh, attack by Clough. Among the unrecognizable figures you see is what appears to be an old woman wearing uh, the symbol of Lathander around her neck. And she appears to be comforting a young boy uh, who uh, has a hard time, seems, who, who, who seems almost uh, leaning on her, even though they're both ghosts. Do I recognize the young boy at all? No, you've never seen him before. And when you arrive, uh, sort of all eyes kind of uh, turn to you because you're the new arrival. Hi. Uh, the gnome says, I know you. You do? From Omu. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. Good to, good to see you again. You can see, by the way, you're wearing your little winged boots, but they're just ghostly and sort of holding you up over the, the rooftop. Is she a robot or human? Uh, she, oh, that's a good question. She is human. Uh, where are we? The old woman says, Oh, my dear, I think we're dead. I just thought for sure that I had one more death save. <laughs> but, but yeah, I, the, the, I, I, for, I didn't tell you that the Balhaneth had two other attacks that it made as it ripped you apart. Okay, good to know. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Well, that happened real fast. I'm yeah. just, I guess I'm just processing what happened, but... Uh, um, that seems to be an aberration that is uh, evil and against everything we stand for in the light of Lathander. Are you guys waiting to destroy it? The tiefling says, no, we're waiting for it to eat us. God damn it, Hibner. <laughs> mm, I remember you always were the realistic one. Um, I don't want to be eaten. So uh, I'm going to try to destroy it. The, the tiefling sort of uh, just can't help but laugh. And then the, the elf just smacks him in the back of the head, back of the neck. I introduce myself to the lady with the Lathander symbol. OK. And the elf starts chastising the tiefling and says, don't make anybody more miserable than they already are. Not in your Hello, last I moment am... of life. <laughs> and when you go over to the old woman, uh, I'm going to let you make another perception check when you're close to her. She lacks detail because she's sort of a fuzzy ghost, sort of colorless and spectral, but... 17. You actually do recognize her, or you believe you have seen her, but not in a long, long time. Possibly when you were a child and first sort of tempted to join the clergy. Um, so she is a legend in the Church of Lathander. Her name is Zares. Um, just <gasps> one name. Uh, she she is, has long been a champion of the Church who took the faith to some of the darkest corners of Faerun and educated people about Lathander, then came back to Waterdeep and headed up the Church there for a while, um, uh, for a good number of years. You... You can't believe that this is her. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm such a big fan. I had posters of you on my bedroom <laughs> wall when I was at Paladin <laughs> School. And I wanted to be just like, I'm, I'm Evelyn. I'm uh, Evelyn Avalon Helvig Marthane at your service. I'm Zares. Yes, I know. And she, she just says, stares at her like this. How did you end up here? Ah, uh, well, first there was a vampire, and then um, a doll, and then you couldn't destroy the doll, um, and there was a ring, but not my ring. There were my souls in, in two rings, but then there was a different ring 
Um, uh, I'm sorry, you're losing me. <laughs> I got bit by a tentacle thing. You were, you were attacked by a vamp. Was it vampire? Uh, not this time. This time I just got bit by a tentacle thing. Oh. She says, I'm so sorry. But I there wish there was, was something a I could do. Do you know Strahd? He's the worst. I've heard that name. I know that name. Yeah. I don't like him. I have so. I mean, we. I mean, I don't know if, if you have time. I love. I, we can. We can. You chat. hear a sound up ahead, like sort of the air being sucked out, and then uh, you see what looks like a black orb come out of the maelstrom overhead. And as it descends, you see it's got eyes in it, and it sprouts four tentacles. Evelyn tries to grab her axe. There's nothing there. She's just like grabbing for all of the weapons and none of them are there. Nothing's there. Oh, they're coming back. Could you tell me what's going on? The creature that's devouring our souls is hungry. It sends these entities to grab hold of us and take us up into the vortex. Isn't there something we can do? The Morning Lord wouldn't want us to be sucked into a evil vortex. I have offered many prayers to the Morning Lord since my arrival. I have received no guidance and no reply. Well, you know where one or more are gathered in his name, he will surely hear. So let's, let's hold hands. And she tries to grab everyone's hands. Let's all hold hands together and we'll lift our praises to the morning Lord. And I'm sure he will answer. You see uh, some folks try to sort of extend hands and their hands sort of pass through each other. Um, there's nothing really for them to hold we on to. We just kind of try. So they just kind of try. Um, but everybody seems amenable. Even Hibner, the tiefling uh, recalcitrant soul that he is. Uh, does sort of mosey on over and become part of the circle. Uh, and there's, a, there's like 13 of you up here, all told. Um, you sort of got the boy by the hand, and the boy's got his other hand sort of with the, the priestess. Um, at roughly that time, another ghost appears on this rooftop, and it appears to be the ghost of an orc. <clears throat> ah! Welcome, stranger. Join us in prayer as we lift our <laughs> petitions to the morning Lord. <laughs> he sort of reaches for something and nothing's there. I don't have my weapons either. It's real frustrating, isn't it? Paulton, you stare at the decapitated head of Evelyn, clearly <laughs> deprived of life. Uh... Paulton just like drops to his knees. Okay. And just like picks it up and is just like staring at it. As you just sort of roll it over, like one of its eyes pops open. <laughs> <sighs> um okay. Uh, but you see this, the sparkle in the eye is gone. It's just right now a, a metal head. Like one of those baby dolls where if you tilt it back, the eyes That's exactly what I was thinking. That's exactly what I was thinking. Are we still on initiative? Yeah. All you right. You can hear, by the way, the creature just roaring in pain high, high up in the darkness of that chimney. Um, that roar at least tells you it's not getting close. All right. Paulton just sets it down. He looks up. And it's just going to hop on the mandolin. Okay. And then just fly straight up there. <sighs> All right. Paulton disappears up the chimney. Uh, let's see. The fly spell, I believe you can move 60 feet. Let me check that. That would be good to all know. All dying. We're all going to die. Yeah, you can fly 60 feet up the chimney, which gets... Um, so do you still have your little candle so you can see? Sure. Yeah. You probably don't want to be totally blind in the dark with this thing. 
Yeah. Okay, so your candle, when you get within like five feet of it, just like the movie Alien, where the alien does in Tom Skerritt, that moment where Tom Skerritt turns and it's right there in his face, just sort of blended in with the surrounding. That's like the experience you have. You just sort of come around this rocky chimney and boom, there it is in your light staring back at you with a gaping spider maw and a whole bunch of burnt tentacles. It looks really bad off, but very, very angry. And all that would take up everything that, I can do, yeah. So um, hopping on your mandolin and using it to cast fly would be an action. And then moving would be your movement. Mm -hmm. So you could do a bonus action or something with a bonus action if you have such a thing. Let's see. Uh, might and might just end up being some flare. Okay. So it's just like right in my face. Yeah. And I'm just like, it's a good day to die, buddy. <laughs> See who it's going to be. <laughs> and Paulton's voice sort of echoes down. All right. <clears throat> um, let's see. That's Paulton. Strix, you have a death save. Hooray! Oh, come on. I'm helping. <laughs> Oh, 19. One success. Hooray. All right, good. The creature. Hmm. Well, it was denied its lunch. And then it couldn't it eat. Very good. Couldn't eat Evelyn. Evelyn. All right. Uh, hmm. But it is really hurt. All right. Uh, it will attempt to uh, attack Paulton with a tentacle. Uh, it rolls a 17. Cool. All right. Which is going to hit. Uh, it does s eight points of bludgeoning damage as it wraps its tentacle around you. Right after I say, let's find out who it is. <laughs> he wraps me, I'm just like, well, guess it's me. <laughs> and I am down. You okay. Uh, you hear uh, Paulton say, I guess it's me. Uh, next is, oh, uh, then it will make a bite attack against Paulton. Oh, neat. All right, it's definitely going to hit you. So, Paulton, you have two failed death saves as a result of the bite attack. No. Okay. Um, All right, cool. Did anyone else expect this today? Because I didn't. <laughs> nope. No. Wait, Chris, was I still invisible? Were you invisible? After getting hit by a fireball? Oh, uh, well, okay. Well, he he'd still be invisible, but he's carrying the, the, the oh, candle. So the candle mm, lights right true. there. True, okay. Um, but you know what? I'm going to... I'm going to say he's got disadvantage on the attack roll. Um, not that matters because he can always hit you, try to hit you with a second tentacle. Uh, actually, uh, if you are still invisible, which nothing has dispelled it, uh, actually, oh no, you cast the fly from the mandolin, so that's fine. Um, so if you're still concentrating on visibility spell, it actually missed you with both of its tentacles. Hmm, okay, I guess it's so, just not yet. So little uh, uh, retcon, you're still alive. Okay, okay. Um, and... Thank you, Chad. Yeah, very good. And it is now Simon's turn. He's not doing anything. DF, what do you do? Uh-huh. Uh, uh... Uh, Wake her up. <laughs> uh, I, I keep trying to stabilize Strix. That, that thing's like way up there, right? Like yeah, way it's up a, there. It's, it's at least 50, 60 feet up in the, in the, in the uh, chimney. Oh my God. And Strix is still uh, dying. What, what kind of action is it to stabilize? It's an action. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, 
at this point, it's uh, uh, Dieth is just uh, set to complete trembling uh, and can can't barely like actually think through actions right now, and he's just trying to stabilize Strix. Okay. Another medicine check. Okay. Or wisdom in this case. Just wisdom. Uh, Thirteen. You stabilize her. She's no longer need to make that save. Okay. See, I can do that. I can do that. And so, even though it's like way up there, do do I have a sense of where it is, or not? I don't think I can see it. Nope. Okay. Great. And that's mostly because the <sighs> chimney isn't perfectly smooth. It's sort of ragged and jagged, so you, you don't have a direct line of sight to it. <sighs> yeah, all right. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, it's going to... Is there... So we got stopped by this thing. What's directly forward if, the tunnel, if I wanted to continue down the path? If what you, was there? If you were to continue down the path, and right now you're just using strict lantern to see, um, it goes for 30 more feet and then appears to branch to the left and right, like it hits a T intersection. Mm. Oh, I hate it. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to stay there with Strix. Okay. Uh, Evelyn, you, yeah. you stand in a circle, your ghostly hands uh, reaching out for one another. You can see more of those black orbs have come out, and they're sort of heading off to other towers. Uh, where you can see tiny ghostly figures on those rooftops as well. Uh, and the one coming down toward you, as it extrudes long tentacles, reaches down and grabs The tiefling. Uh, you Hibner. see, you see that uh, as it wraps its its black tentacles around Hibner, the tentacles become spectral as well, and they just coil around his ghost, rip him out of the circle, and bear him up into the sky. And he's does just my, does my and he's screaming, "I hope you choke on me!" <laughs> does my any of my auras work here? <laughs> uh, no, you don't sense the presence of any auras. Can I try to leap for him and grab him? You do have your flying boots. Yeah, you can. You leap up at him, and you just pass right through him. Ah! <laughs> As he is borne away. Okay, uh, let us pray. She grabs her hands. You return back down to the, the rest of you. Uh, you can see both uh, the elf and the gnome are just kind of looking up, their faces long and drawn, and just the horror of watching their friend torn away from them has not yet sunk in. And then you see Hitler go up into the black. Um, Evelyn has just like laser focus because she literally cannot do anything. So she's just like, she grabs Zara's hand from where she left the circle and she Bows her head. Mm -hmm. She's like, Lathander! Thander, you set me on a quest. I haven't finished it yet. And I do not think it's your will for me to be swallowed by a black god baby that is evil. Please help us. And she shakes Zara's hand. She's like, you're better at this than me. Please go. Uh, you can see... Uh, as she uh, looks toward you, I do sense something strange about you. Something different than all the other ghosts I've seen since I arrived. Can you pray for me? Can you get Lathander's attention? Yes. And then she starts uh, murmuring a prayer, even though she knows there's no light that shines in this place, there's no sun to see or worship. She does believe that Lathander is watching over you all. Um, and then uh, after she sort of mumbles this prayer in her old woman voice, she turns to you and she says, I 
feel there is hope. There's always hope. And then the thunder speaks to me of parables and the worm and the apple. The worm and the apple? That's what he told you just now? He says, you are the worm and the apple. I'm the worm and the apple. That's not good. Uh, no, I, I, I th I'm not sure. It doesn't sound nice. No, I mean, I know a thing about some worms that are in a place, but I don't have one of those. I wonder if that's what he's talking about. I know some pretty gross evil worms that if, are gonna- If you're the worm, then this is the apple. Oh! Oh, oh, oh. Oh. I see. Evelyn kind of takes a shuddering breath. And she like closes the circle of hands. And she says, may the light of Lathander shine upon you and bless you. And then she. I don't goes, believe in your gods. That's okay. Just turn your face to the light and all will be revealed. And she, she like gives a very deep, like thankful bow to Zares. And then she goes to throw herself in front of one of the tentacle blob things. Okay. Paulton. You are standing yeah. by candlelight in front of this creature. Okay, back here. Sorry. Back back here. Um okay. Blind rage shot up to him. Uh Emmett, well Visibility doesn't matter now. So. I'm trying to think. What do I do? What do I do? <laughs> um, <laughs> That's the best thing you could blast them or stab them with. Yeah. Kill I the yeah, son of think, think of all the things that we talked about at the start of the episode. <laughs> I wonder like, why. No, Paulton's more like going through. Okay. It's just like, what, what do I say? Yeah. What's, what's, what's my um, line? Like, like he goes up and he's about to say something heroic and he goes, shit, I had something. <laughs> oh, well. And I'm going to just cast a thunder wave like right on him at fifth level. Okay. He has to make a constitution saving throw. That's, that's a rage der wave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Um... He would fail that save, but he's going to use his legendary resistance to succeed instead. Oh, cool. cool. Great. So cool. I, I believe you do Love half it. damage. Cool. Okay. So let me see. And it, and it, won't, and it won't push him away. I, I didn't think he had much place to go. Yeah. So. Uh, okay. So I'm just going to use a generator okay. to save us some time. All right. That would be uh, 31. So half of that. Okay. So 15. All right. Uh, he is blasted by uh, those ripples of sonic energy that tear through its body. You see its flesh uh, peel away, and you obliterate it. Ah! Uh. Whew. Yeah, you did exactly one more point of damage than you needed to to kill it. <laughs> Oh my gosh. It had, oh my it had 14 hit points left. Uh, 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 uh. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so, oh, yeah. Diath, there, there, this sort of horrid crap starts raining down uh, the chimney. It's not Paulton. It seems to be aforementioned creature. Okay. All right, Paulton, you still have some movement left if you want to use it. Just going to 
float my way back down. Okay. And Paulton sinks back down the shaft, and he's sort of covered with gore, and he's got like very few hit points left. Yeah. Just going to like make my way back to But the... his candle's still lit. My candle's still lit. <laughs> very important. <laughs> I'm going to go back to... Uh... To, to the to the evil in head. Okay, all right. That will complete your movement. Um, and Strix is stable. The Bahanath is no more. Death. Are we still in initiative? Uh, for the purposes of the narrative, yes. Since okay, sure. I'll I'll all switch right. back and forth between you and Evelyn. Um. Um. Yeah, it's just kind of still like basically like kneeling there, like cradling unconscious Strix and sees Paulton just kind of slowly fall down. And I imagine he just almost kind of lands like with his back turns towards Dieth as he's as Paulton like continues to look at Evelyn. Um, uh, I don't think Dieth Dieth can't doesn't know what to say and can't say anything. Uh, but keeps looking down the hallway of uh, where they were going. And uh, is, yeah, just, just we'll, we'll wait for Paulton. Okay. Yeah, Paulton's down. Paulton's by Evelyn's head right now. Okay. And then, right. Evelyn, you fly away from the circle. Uh, Zares says up to you. Everything will be all right. Know that you're I, loved. I know. Thank you. And she just says a prayer quietly to herself as she goes. All right. Lavander, bless my soul and use it for your holy purpose. Save my friends and let their souls find rest or let them stay alive and do your holy purpose and let them... Sh and she's just on and on and on as she just hurdles toward... All right, uh, yeah, you see that uh, one of these spheres with the tentacles uh, has in its clutches a, um, a middle-aged woman, um, sort of pale and thin, and she's uh, crying and screaming and railing against it, but is unable to escape from its grasp. It, Take me it, instead! It clearly plucked her from another one of the towers. I try to... Is and as you, as you like, look around, you also see like there's like eight or ten of them, all with s spirits of people in their clutches, heading back up into the maelstrom. I was trying to go for one that was like maybe about to grab somebody and like shove myself in instead. Okay, uh, when you fly over to uh, one and interpose yourself, I would like you to make a charisma. Can I make a persuasion? Yes. Sweet. Take me instead. Nat 20. Jesus. Okay. It will. No! <laughs> no. When it wraps yeah, its tentacles, we, when it wraps its tentacles know. around you, yeah, this is like one of those, is it a happy Nat 20? Or a, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I feel it. Yeah, wait. As it wraps its tentacles around you, you feel like these tentacles are just made of pure negative energy. Like these creatures exist wholly within the negative energy realm. And it, it burns, it sort of tears at the very fabric of your spirit. Ah! It takes everything that you have just to even hold your cohesion together as a soul as it wraps itself around you and flies toward the black swirling vortex and the twister and the umbilical leading to the horrible, horrible abomination. I think she screams out in pain. Okay. And uh, yeah, you are drawn up into the vortex. Make a perception check. We end here. I'm That's gonna... another nat 20. I'm not joking. Oh, shit. <laughs> How? I don't know, Lathander. <laughs> okay. Uh, you can see as you are drawn up toward the vortex, as you look back down below the towers, it is an entire city of towers that seem to almost have no bottom. They just sort of descend and descend and descend and descend with sort of arches connecting them, almost forming this stone web. Beneath them, you see 
what looks like a fiery maelstrom, like a burning lava pit or some, some gigantic burning lava sea. Um, but it shimmers and it's sort of covered with all kinds of smoke and blowing ash. The other thing you notice is all that grit you saw blowing in the wind are actually like skin flakes uh, that are sort of caught up in this thing. But what you notice with your natural 20 is that the towers, some of them you can see are shuddering and crumbling at the bottom. And one of the towers sort of collapses and sinks with a dull rumble into the fiery abyss, breaking, the breaking all the sort of stone bridges and arches that connect it to its nearest neighbors as it goes down. This isn't something that, like, is a natural occurrence here. This is something that's, like, starting to happen. Yes. She smiles through the pain. All right. Paulton. So he sets the head back down and just kneels next to it. And he kind of puts his head down and goes, Lathander. <gasps> you punk bitch. I swear to God, <laughs> if you don't give her back, I will find you. And I don't know what I'll do. You're like a god, supposedly. I don't know. God, it's kind of hard to tip. But regardless, I will find you. And I will give you such a scolding. <laughs> and then I would, I'll come back with a better plan next time. <laughs> uh, hollow it be thy name. <laughs> By the light of something... God, you think I'd, I would I would know how this goes by now? Um, uh, Gigi, <laughs> Anna's dying. <laughs> <laughs> and then he stands up and he's like, "I've done all I can do." Okay, so she's not dead, guys. It's fine. She's she's not dead. She it's it's just I don't it's it's fine. It's fine. It's good. Um, Simon. Oh God, Simon. <laughs> oh oh oh. Um, you just see a blanket in a, in sort of Simon's shape lying on the ground. It's like, <gasps> can I can I can I heal the boy? <laughs> uh, when you pull back the blanket, you see that there's just this burnt sort of boy-shaped hunk of wood and metal uh, lying on the, on the floor of the tunnel. You don't see any, like his face is burnt off. Oh, he just got that. Uh, you, can try, you can absolutely try to heal him if you want. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and... Uh, just, look, just one look at him, it's like... Uh, me, me I'm work. just like... It's like, um, he's fine too. Watch. Ch here we go. I'm gonna, well, it's my mandolin, so it's not a hand, so. You, see you, start to, play you, you, you play song. a magical healing song. All right. Strix is still unconscious. Yeah, Strix is still unconscious. Oh, uh, yeah, well. Okay. Uh, yeah, if his ears weren't burnt off, he'd be able to what hear What song your do you song. play him? Um... Uh, uh, oh God, come back to me on that. <laughs> All right, I'll come back to you on that. He, he plays, are you Jimmy Ray? <laughs> uh, 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 Despacito, go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, yeah. That, you know, Paulton really needs a, his own song list, like his yeah. own, mm -hmm. now that I think about it. All right, uh, that being said, uh, Paulton will start to play the mandolin, uh, playing a tune, and at least as you start playing, there doesn't seem to be any response or any sense that the healing is taking hold of this incinerated puppet. It's a, it's a, it's a, de it's a delayed reaction. It's a delayed response. It was a poor song choice. I'm sorry. It'll work, though. 
Uh, and we are back to DF. DF, you see Paulton standing over, playing his music to revivify Simon. Um. Evelyn. Yes. Make a perception check. Fifteen. As you are drawn up into the black vortex, you you look down upon the rooftop that you left Zares and the little boy and all those others on there. The last thing you see is the ghost of Simon <sighs> appear on that rooftop. And then you are whipped up through the vortex, the twister, into, or along it, through it, into the gullet of something so vile that you, your divine sense is not gone. It, it's, your body sort of is gone, but you, your sense is still there. It becomes just absolutely overwhelming, this undead monstrosity, this immensity, uh, that you are basically sucked into the gullet of for it to feed on is unlike any evil you have ever faced before. This is basically an unborn god uh, that you have been cast into. Um, when you descend into it, do you do anything or think anything or say anything? I think that this is so counter to everything Evelyn. I mean, she has she has a thing about dirt, right? But she's like literally surrounded by the most vile thing possible and being consumed by it. So like, and I think she, she knows she's at her demise. So I think pretense is lost. So I think she's just like, I think she starts screaming and it becomes like, almost a high-pitched, like, ringing sound, and she just doesn't stop. Like, the Princess Bride scream ringing across the land. Like, I don't think she does much but try to just endure for okay. her holy mission. Uh, the last thing you feel is your spirit just sort of blown asunder by your belief, and you become this sun. And all the spirits down below you, they just see these sunbeams tear through the body of this black moon uh, that hovers over their heads. And one of those beams sort of falls upon the ghosts on the platform you left behind and shines upon Zares. And she says, take that. Evelyn smiles. And that's where we'll stop. <laughs> Okay, everything <laughs> is fine. Cool. Uh, Yo, know, I learned a lesson today. What's that? that uh, <laughs> I have uh, healing spells that I should use before fireball. Mm, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, um, one coda to this. Great. Paulton? Uh, hi. Diaz? No. And Strix? Don't say my name. <laughs> you spit my name out your mouth. All your hit point maximums are restored to <gasps> full. That's what I thought. Get wrecked. That's good. That's like 50 back for me. <laughs> yeah, I mean, your hit points stay the same. Your current hit points stay the same but your oh. maximum hit points are now back up where they should be. Okay, so I feel better, but I don't. Correct, you still feel battered and bruised. You haven't actually healed any damage, but the death curse on you has ended. Ah. Okay. Ah. Cool, so today went well. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Enjoy the rest of the campaign. <laughs> 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 No, I've got no. ideas. I've got ideas. Yeah, well, I'm a son, so have fun with your ideas. 
No, it's no, it's fine. Nope. nope, I got it. I got it. All right. Everything can come back. It's fine. Everything's fine. Ugh. I mean, and also Simon sure was short lived with the map. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, we all knew that couldn't last. That long. wasn't actually. That, I mean, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have a lot of hit points. Um, Sorry, Simon. He knew it was a bad idea. But he was there regardless. Oh, yeah, he did not. God. He rolled a. He rolled like a two on his save too, and that didn't help. So, no. See, it's fine because no matter what, we still have a piece of Evelyn's soul. Take care of what. That's true. We so, do. So we do. That's got to be sort of something, right? Mm -hmm. We do. Yep. Food for thought. No pun intended. Oh, God. Uh, yeah, you know who we're gonna have to ask. No, we're not. We are absolutely not. You can ask Lathander. I'm not, a, no. Paulson can ask Lathander. He's better at talking. GG. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I spent most of that episode hugging myself for safety. Mm, yeah. yeah. I was unconscious for that whole, almost whole episode. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I still wrote it out as it was a ride. <laughs> All right, uh, so tune in next week when the Waffle Crew finds out what's, what's next. Yeah. Oh, and uh, announcements. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, still Strix is going to be an Idol Champions. Hooray! Yep. Um, I'm also doing a super fun special thing with my friend uh, Kayla, who did all the art for In the Birdcage. She streams on Sundays, and she is doing a fun-themed uh, Strix comic. So hmm. make sure to check that out. It's going to be real cool. And I wanted to say thank you to Maz for making my Strix doll. Yeah. Super. Half and stuff. And a little straw puppet. Remember when, <laughs> remember when this was our biggest problem? It still <sighs> is. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, it's gone. <laughs> uh, uh. Nate, do you want to talk about Take Me Anywhere? or? Oh, what? yeah. Uh, I released a new song. It's the first single off of an album I'm working on that should be out within the next few months, but it's called Take Me Anywhere. It's, uh, it's I'm really happy with how it came out. And, and the uh, album's called Paladin Exposure? Yep, Paladin Exposure. <laughs> <That's exactly. laughs> um, so yeah, uh, new song. If you want, go check it out. YouTube.com yep. slash Nate Wants to Battle. It's a really good song. Freaking listen to it. I just downloaded it today. I haven't listened to it. Thanks, guys. Did you listen to it? And realize how crazy well it goes with exactly what we talked about last campaign? No, I haven't yet. Nate is a freaking mastermind. He is the bard. <laughs> True. Yep. Any other announcements? Well, yeah. I'm going to play another D&D &D game right now. <laughs> on misclicks. And I'm, I'm the DM, so you you'll probably support? get to see another TPK. I'm just going to kill them all. Mm -hmm. Just going to yeah. rocks fall. Uh, Holly, are you going to come play? Do you want to come play? I'll come and support. Yes, I will okay. come play. I will come We're missing play. a player, so Holly's going to come okay. play with us I'm gonna, I don't know who I'm going to play, but I'm going to get a snack, and I'm going to come play because we need to. We need each other's support right now. <laughs> <laughs> pay, pay attention to Anna's game where suddenly eight creatures show up with legendary actions. <laughs> <laughs> my players yes. are like, what? And I'm like, it's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I would like to mention uh, for my announcement that uh, today's creature of the week, the Balhanath, uh, appears in the upcoming Morden Kanan's Tome of Foes. And can also eat shit and die. Yeah, yep. well, <laughs> please. Yep. Die, it yep. did. Um, it did die. Yeah, yes, thanks. It did. It took the, the, wow, yeah, the 58 and then 52 points of damage, or it took half of that, but still, that's absurd. That, that's I didn't amazing. know Dieth could do that much damage. Yeah, he's a badass. Yeah. That was really yeah. cool. Yeah, and then Human I come in with my, I come in with like 15 damage. Oh my. <laughs> hey, it worked. Here too. Kill Steela. <laughs> yeah. It, it turns out. <laughs> that, was, that was a last hit, Steel. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. It turns out Diaz gets real serious whenever Strix is in danger. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Mm. Who knew? Uh, you guys both 58 and then 52. Holy yeah. cow. So, in addition yeah. to the Battle Hanoth, by the way, Morton Kane's Tome of Foes contains a lot of interesting information about all sorts of creatures of the Shadowfell. So. Those of you Great. wanting to run a Shadowfell campaign will be duly enriched by the contents of this book. As you can see, what fun it is. <laughs> <laughs> so fun. Yeah. Thanks, Murdy Curdy. Yeah. As per usual, we got the Dice Camera Extra subreddit. 
Be sure to go there and discuss everything that happened today. I feel like there's a couple of things to, to talk about. Uh, yeah, um, you could start a new thread. What should Anna's next character be? Just uh, start Don't that say that. Stop. <laughs> it's also true, though. <laughs> uh, so I'm, I'm just going to spam that link. Yeah. Uh, there's also the Dice Camera Action Discord, which you can find the link to within the subreddit. And then uh, Power Score RPG's Waffle Talk <laughs> takes place immediately after this episode at 6 p.m. To, for further live discussion about what the fuck. Yep. Me, I'm going to go home and read my Twitter account and... <laughs> <laughs> I just I'm... picture, like, Milo sitting there just like, mm-hmm. <laughs> that, that happened, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, why? Not, this is, you know, I never know how these things are going to play out. This was not, this did not play out at all as I expected. It didn't? No. Oops. No. You have to assume how suboptimal we are. Well, yeah, but yeah. (laughs) What did you think was going to happen? I mean, you know, at least on paper, the Balhaneth is appropriate challenge for your party. (laughs) (laughs) What about a party that's like already dying? (laughs) Yeah, what about a party at 13 maximum hit points? And forgets to heal their tank. (laughs) Yeah, that, yeah. So I'm not going to forget again. Was I supposed to? Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> Have a great day. Yes, Bye. absolutely. Bye. Enjoy your game. It's fine. It's fine. Thanks. All will be fine. Fine. We have yeah. the Yay. rings. It's fine. Yes, we'll figure it all out next week. It'll be great. All right. Yeah, it'll be great. Have cool. a great week crying, everyone. <laughs> yep, great. See all you all right. on Miss Clicks, where I will take it out of my players. All right. Bye-bye. Bye.